Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2. Let me introduce the Protoss player. We don't deserve, but the one we need right now. The smiling assassin. It's Hero. Up against his longtime nemesis. In the blue in the top right, Micro Jackson. Beyond. The Terran player known for manipulating any map to his advantage. A skill that's going to be incredibly helpful here in the grand finals of the Team Liquid map contest. Yes. Dozens of new maps. Well, actually, I think there were 15 finalists from these for these players to pick from. And uh, for the first time, the, the only category is freestyle. No standard, no rush, no conventional maps. Yeah, there's still some certain conventions we have to abide by. Uh, boring rules and all that. But uh, map makers were not constrained to any particular sort of layout. And a new mechanic, healing shrines have been added, though not every map takes advantage of them. Uh, they do heal your units relatively quickly over time, and I think we'll see several of those maps here today. But it, something a little bit different between these two. And if you like something that's very recognizable, but a little bit different, well, then you'll definitely like this channel, and hopefully this video as well, uh, and maybe even subscribe. But Jimmy, what are we... What? 1,242 1, likes. Yes, one more than the last one. 1,242 likes on this video. And, and I'll cast another series. And I'll, I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully a bit of new maps and Beyond versus Hero will make it a little bit better. This map called Moonwater. Um... Not sure. Well, these players are so hot that the ice will melt, and we'll see if the physics are a little bit different like we see sometimes on the underwater maps. I've seen a few maps that, uh, I mean, uh, Jimmy, real quick. Oh, yeah. Let's turn the physics up to extreme. I've got, I'm optimistic that we'll see some of the more creative uh, sort of physics and ragdolling and all that fun stuff that the pro gamers turn off because they're sweaty tryhards. But Moonwater featuring a, not quite an island base, but definitely a uh, more contested base as both players are in the top left, top right, will be expanding uh, effectively away from each other down the map, except for, of course, if anyone goes for that center gold. It has uh, six mineral patches, but two gas gathers, making it one of the most lucrative bases out there. But unlikely anyone's going to be taking it, especially with a cyclone already just showing up into the base. Let's see if there's anything else out here worth noting. I don't believe there is a healing shrine on this map. It is the new mechanic added to the game that map makers were able to use, but it wasn't a requirement in order to enter the map contest or make it to the finalists. Uh, so, yeah, none so far. There's a little indicator on the map usually. Beyond just being aggressive, Nero with plenty of adepts. They've made it to this point in the tournament. I think these players have played the maps at least once or twice before, though pro gamers somewhat notorious for uh, occasionally loading into a new map and then wondering where they are right now. Um, but for the most part, StarCraft II maps follow relatively similar conventions. Conventions that allow many Terran players to show up, take out two stalkers, and then boost a medevac in with siege tanks and go for an attack, no matter where we are. Blink is done in 10 seconds. Shield battery overcharge should be online, but beyond, already just showing up. He lost the cyclone, but he damaged some of the stalkers. He killed two. Gonna back off now. An immortal popping out. Gonna be a huge part of actually defending this. And now, on the chase is Hero. The low ground! Gonna use the mineral wall. Hero could blink over, but oh, beyond. Using the terrain. I mean, Terran is only one eye off. So, we saw earlier in this same tournament Dark lamenting Beyond's usage um, of many of the features of the maps. We'll see if Hero ends up in a similar spot, as those are the big three in Korea, especially in these regular tournaments. Beyond, Hero, in dark of their respective races. Also kind of on the same team sometimes, so. 
Peon on Team Shopify, Dark and Hero on Team DKZ. Liberator, I always love just a little detail, even above the uh, moon water here, which I don't know what the, these moon dinosaurs, it, they, they don't, it doesn't say what moon, to be clear, as in the StarCraft universe, um, it could be any moon, it could be a space station, it's unclear, but uh, this moon clearly populated by some mm, ultralisks or whatever uh, progenitor they were. The blank stalkers went over the top of the mineral wall. Are those, is that a wall? It looks kind of weird. I am reasonably sure it's a wall, but maybe smaller units can slip through them. I don't think so. Those stalkers definitely blinked over the top and, and stalkers have never been accused of being a small unit. Not a large one either, just kind of in the middle. Not really noteworthy at all. Average, mediocre. Moving on. Uh, engineering base. One, one on the way. It looks like we have uh, pulled back into a much more standard sort of mid-game scenario. As both players pass 50 workers, Liberator, waiting for its moment, knows that if Hero's not distracted, it's unlikely to get much damage done, Hero. Gaining a lot of vision out on the map. Sees pretty much everything, including Beyond's main base, where he's camped out an observer. Beyond building layers of supply depots in order to wall off against, well, especially charge lots. Interesting, this base can be attacked from the low ground here if Hero's able to mine through it. Or Beyond, if anybody goes through the mineral wall, that opens up this whole attack path. And some of the ice rocks here, or just ice, it's just, it just says ice. It's a hardened ice. Doesn't really matter. Immortals and sentries working their way through. Adept Shades keeping track of things. Probably doesn't want to give away the Observer either. Both players slowing down. We got Combat Shield and 1-1. One, one. After that early aggression, we have that kind of awkward build-up phase where neither player has an army that they can risk. If Beyond just goes across, Beyond's more than happy to pick up and head to the main. But with Blink Stalkers as the first choice and Colossi right behind, even for Beyond, it's a bit too risky to just go YOLOing three medevacs into the main. But the upgrades are finishing. Which ones? Yes! 1-1, one, one, Combat Shield, Stim, and Concussive Shells, all within five seconds of each other. So now Beyond is ready to go. He's... wait, there's a gap? I don't know if it was mineral walled. Oh, that's a cool idea. A little mineral wall here. I don't even know if Beyond mined it on purpose. Uh, as it, it just is kind of part of the mineral field there. But, here we are. Hero continues shading through. He actually completes the Adept Shade, which is a bit of a suspicious timing. Beyond going to be ready. Guardian Shield. Four Colossi, one of them hallucinated, actually tanking some of the fire here. Widow Mines will cut down on the charge lock count. The force fields are somewhat helpful, but the Marauders will back off around. Beyond with either Selecto Army Hockey or bringing back the Liberator. And an Immortal will go down. Colossus. Uh, Beyond holds, but he loses 20 SCVs, and Hero comes in with another round. So overall, that Adept starting things off, and the rest of the army trying to follow it up. Still two Colossi, a dangerous number. The Stalkers use their blank. Viking will soften up the Colossus, and Marauders will punch their way through. But 63 to 52 workers. A relatively even trade there that I think tilts in favor of Hero because he has a fourth base done, kind of tucked into the center of the map here. Beyond has a fourth command center completed. Hero's going to keep the aggression on, which is a bit risky in and of itself, as Beyond's army is essentially pure marauder. A dozen marauders right now. He's working on 2-2, as well as more Vikings. And enough medevacs survive that fight that he can keep it going. He doesn't need to rebuild medevacs so he can commit the starport to the Vikings. Hero in an okay position. How many gateways? Eight. Now going up to 9 and 10, that's how you really capitalize on a better economy. Especially if you don't really have the robo count yet. Robos take quite a while to come online, whereas warp gates, once you finish them up, you can start warping in and immediately capitalize on that income. Though it's very likely Hero will want more advanced tech if the game goes on to the point where Beyond gets 2-2. Two, two. 
and he can slow things down a bit. But Charles Lotz from the north side. Hero blunks forward, Charles Lotz from the south. And the Colossi getting a little distracted by the SCVs. Widowmines will burrow mid-fight. Not going to get a shot off. Knocks down one Colossus. Marauder's moving forward. Disruptor comes up. Fires a shot. And nothing. Maybe a Marine in there. And Hero's going to end up losing the Colossi. Losing the Immortal. More Charge Lots are coming in. The Disruptor survives for now. The Charge Lots Vikings hit the deck. That Disruptor could come in and devastate everything. And I think with those Charge Lots distracting the rest of the Bio Army, beyond down to 42 supply. He's gone for the gold! He got the orbital. I don't know if Hero noticed. Beyond was going for the gold during this. And that is the kind of move that can bring Beyond right back into it. He's down 70 to 45 workers. Hero has near perfect vision. He's up 1600 income per minute. He's taken a fifth base. But if Beyond is allowed to mine from the gold, which gives him about 40% more income for the same amount of workers, especially on this low worker count. But Hero spotted it immediately. Stalker comes down. How does he deal with it? Is the question. Hero actually can't really get units. I wonder if Hero knows how Beyond got down there. Viking picked off. Beyond gonna commit to defending the probes. He spots it. Beyond spots the probes coming down. Well, the charge lots are coming into the third, though. Beyond. It's a tenuous position. His economy is, uh... He's on a shoestring budget right now, but as long as he slaps those shoes on mules, he can keep walking. Double Ruptor, 10 gates, Hero has added on the production, he's got the base, it's his game to lose right now, but, oh, he walks right down into it, loses one Colossus, loses two at Ruptor, and now it's just gateway units, without any armor upgrades, this is how things start to turn. But there's not quite enough bio. Reinforcements on the way. Widow Mines will burrow. Hero turns around in time. Couple zealots are split off to kill SCVs. We'll get several kills. Charge lots. Charging past the Guardian Shield. Gonna get a gun down as they come through. Disruptor shot fired. And a single SCV. Picks up, drops back down. And now Beyond is on the chase. But Charge Lots into the main. Charge Lots into the natural. More Widow Mines going to be burrowed. But SCV is being slaughtered. Eight. More workers down. Zealots are slicing through, and Beyond is getting caught in this awkward position. He, he's never able to recover economically. He's never going to financially recover from this. A gold base will help, though. The medevacs are nearly out of energy. Another Ruptor is wandering down, and now Hero has plus one armor for those Zealots. It adds up. The SCV is kind of stuck in the middle of everything. Has to be careful of his own widow mines. 28 SCVs down. Charge lots continue to stream into the natural like moon water. And now, even with the widow mines continuing to stack up the damage beyond, can't put together the defenses. He loses the gold base, and with it, I think. Oh no, he's not gonna. He's not gonna tap out. He still has enough army. All right. I I, I was I was gonna tack on and loses the game to the end. It would have been super dramatic, but Beyond stabilizes barely for now. But instead of ending with a dramatic bang, I think Hero's just gonna lean on him until he's got nothing left but a whimper. Two Colossi, the constant unit production. The Colossi trying, the Widow Mind's dying. Another, oh my god, all those Widow Mines triggered, and they all hit Zealots. Disruptor shot, plus three infantry weapons, Beyond refuses to give up. The Widow Mines are coming down. Seven more SCVs. 87 SCVs to two probes killed, but 100 dead Zealots. Hmm. Another orbital burns next to the proxy gate that was never dealt with. I think he only scouted it here. He's actually going to take a disruptor shot. There we go. Game one goes to hero. Finally, Beyond gets knocked out of it. A solid start. Hero takes Moonwater. A dramatic game, though. I think both players, with some experience on the map, Beyond clearly 
Uh, but Hero adapted quickly. And that stream of zealots. Just a very aggressive in-your-face Protoss. Not trying to play that kind of battle mage style that we see some Protoss attempt, especially against Beyond. But instead, just staying up in his grill and, and daring him to challenge it. But we go in to game number two. Sacred Isle. This map, definitely uh, a more dramatic one. As you have kind of a split set of bases, both in look, not in layout. The layout is identical, but I always love the split tile sets. Beyond is proxying near this beautiful, beautiful, rich Vespian geyser. Where he can jump up through the special Reaper jump location into the pocket base. Next to the um, captive Moopies. We keep them there because they, they enjoy it, alright? I know. They like it when people watch. Me too. Like and subscribe. The mineral walls. So we went all the way around the north side. Brought this down. It's very unlikely to be Command scouted. Upgrade complete. Now Hero, he sees the double gas. He sees a severe lack of any barracks in the base. So... Now, this map has showed up in pretty much every series. Best of three or five. It, I think... Well, therefore I am. Stop right there, criminal scum. Citizens arrest from the probes. You're wanted for murder. Sponsored by Monster Energy. Um, no. Uh, <clears throat> the Team Liquid Map Contest. Sponsored by Monster Energy. Uh, and Wardy. Well, not really sponsored. Just hosted by Wardy. Either way, shout out to Wardy. Hmm, that was a roller coaster. But the Reaper gets in. Did it? There's nothing to see. At least uh, there wasn't at the time. But Twilight Council on the way. Cyclone. This map also no. I, I hyped up the healing shrines, but so far, no maps with healing shrines. I think we will get. Um, another map that's been very popular throughout the series is Anomaly Found, I believe. The green map. I can tell because some few maps are so committed to the green. And I'm not talking like green like pine trees. Green like radioactive waste, but like in a good way. I, I, you know what? We'll get there. I assume. Um, Blink. I mean, the Sacred Isle. There are the Bubulas, the Speed Zones in the center. Let's see if there are any other. The Dubulas at the back, the slow zones outside the bases that make it a little harder to get away with drops or warpins. Quite a lot of bases scattered around here. I have yet to see a game on this map go particularly late, though, as there are so many opportunities to uh, manipulate the low ground for some sort of siege attack or, or get a uh, something in the pocket base. It just seems to be full of shenanigans. And beyond... Well, if Shenanigans was a player who wanted to reach the character limit of their name, Beyond would be it. Cyclone takes out two probes, and he'll get away with it. I do love the little... the split in the doodads and such. Oh, of course, the Moopies roasting the Marines. You know, like in the movie. Oh. Shame. The so Shame. greedy with those medevacs. Do what a cyclone drop over there. I think you open up with the cyclone just in case they go Stargate. As widow mines are good but unreliable. And then if it isn't Stargate, you send the cyclone out with the medevac, potentially get some damage done. But you're not. And, and this is true, you're not supposed to just lose the medevac and the cyclone. That's not good. Hero, sneaking in. Feel like, yeah, Bion has an idea. I think he spotted the observer. Yeah, he saw the shimmer of the observer and realized, you know what? This might not be working out for me. Hero blinks away. Out of tank range here. What do we got on the other side? A single Banshee Cloak is in production. Is there an Observer back at home? Yes. Well, 
This is not going to go well for the Banshee. Cloak is done, and the Stalkers are still shit, and there it goes. Ah. Well. <laughs> Things are not going Beyond's way this time around. Hero blocking out every attempt. Now, it's not a huge commitment, especially considering Hero did a kind of a half-hearted blink pressure. But... I guess Hero did cut a lot of probes in order to get this far. He lost a few, but with Kuroto Boost, you can easily get... And the fact... So, the fact that Terrans have to build the Orbital Command on top of the fact that Protoss have Chrono Boost usually means if the Protoss is, is building regularly, they'll have 8 to 10 more probes at this stage of the game. Of course, be unkilled 5, and that means Hero cut four or five probes out to make sure he had the units in time. And so far, it's definitely paid off. Banshee's still coming in. He's just... He gets two probes. Definitely not worth the cost of a Banshee. The threat of a Banshee is sometimes worth more than that. So overall, Hero can kind of do whatever he wants. Um, there's not going to be any sort of follow-up. The stim just started for Beyond. He's just now got the NG base. He's just now adding on Barracks 4 and 5. He did take his third base in the pocket here. But the pocket base only has six mineral patches. Regular blue, boring mineral patches. And one gas geyser. So it is about two-thirds of your normal base, give or take. How much you value uh, the Vespine gas. And honestly, at this stage of the game, Vespine gas is rarely the limiting factor for a Terran player. Scan for Beyond catches the Robo Bay and double upgrade forges. He saw the Robo Bay not upgrading, so he may have been led to believe this is some sort of charge lot timing, like a warp prism coming in and warping in a dozen charge lots. But Hero was just, he had just delayed his extended thermal lands past his upgrades. So I think Beyond. A bit of a misread at Hero just being slower on the Thermal Lens there. Speaking of slow, this Colossus really wishes it extended its Thermal Lens a while ago. If you know what I mean. Good luck breaking this position. Four siege tanks behind the mineral walls. Beyond is mining through. Um, the probe very optimistic as to its archaeological skills. Well, we'll check in several hours from now. I wonder if he A-clicked there, and he just caught it on the mini-map, is how this ended up. No, he saw the rocks, he's like, hmm, 27-minute timing attack. That's the one. What do they do, two damage a hit? Yep, rocks have three armor which is significantly less than an Ultralisk. So, by that logic, Ultralisks are at least two rocks hard. Well, with seven armor, uh, which is the max in the game the Ultralisk can get. That's at 2.33 repeating rocks hard of armor. Ghost Snipe don't care, though. Nor most spell cast. Well, here comes Hero. Beyond has, has really pumped out a lot of units. Well, Hero kind of did everything else. Hero has five bases. 2-2 two, two on the way. He's got multiple Ruptors. Uh, Warp Prism Speed and Oracle in production. Meanwhile, Beyond is just maxed out. Neither player really wanted to attack in. This is the longest game I've seen on this map so far, as both players kind of tucked into the corner. Again, though, Hero's going to have a lot of map control. He has the army that's so hard to deal with just coming out of your base. He's got a war prism ready to exploit. He's making multiple proxy gates. He only has six gates right now. The Wla's slowing down the prism, making it so that it will die to a well-placed turret. Let alone two. Now beyond, uh, I think, a 
bit of a mistake there. He's revealed. Yeah, must have misclicked. Oracle, a, a ring of turrets. The Oracle, yep, those are Marine. <laughs> Immediately dies to a turret. Okay. Meanwhile, two more Stargates. Siege tanks on the high ground. Still making things very difficult. I think we're going to see carriers out of Hero here. As breaking this position is eh, a bit optimistic. Fires off a broadside. The un dodges with a cancel on the command centers and then immediately rebuilds. Well, that's quite a spiteful move, Beyond. There's a lot of space with which to build command centers, but this is where the command centers get built. EMP. Beyond picks up. I feel like that one was intentional. Yeah. Scans for observers and then just flies over a zealot anyway. I guess he's setting up to try to flank here. Beyond is maxed out. Really, there's no reason. He can't try to find a fight. In fact, his army is pretty mediocre. The Zealots... Um, bit off a little more than he could chew there. Scan. The speed zones. He's shooting his own marines! Oh my god! Beyond is building seven command centers and slaughtering his own marines because Hero isn't doing it quick enough. I want Beyond to just offer up ten marines to a Ruptor. And then the Ruptor to pull away as he realizes what he's doing. What was he trying to build? Just more Vikings to be able to knock down those Colossi. Go swash over the EMPs. Disruptor shot incredibly late. Zealot's coming in. Beyond every which way. He can't find enough space in his base to build command centers. Meanwhile, the army on the map. Hero starting to reinforce with a bunch of cannons. The Vikings, disruptor shot flung out. Just exploratory Nova there. We'll lose a tank. 10 SCVs down. Beyond left with 69, which is nice enough for him at this stage. Spots a Ruptor. There's a couple more with the army. Hero left it behind here. Another volley. Doesn't find much. More zealots coming in, but the supply depot's funneling him. Ship weapons level 2 completed. And no Liberators, but Vikings definitely going to benefit. It also helps them on the ground. Another wave of charge lots. A fusion core on the way. But I have my suspicions that that is indeed for the advanced ballistics. Caduceus reactor wouldn't be a terrible idea right now. Hero finishes up 3-3 for the charge lots, but hmm, we're fighting in the streets. All right. That's like uh, Roman warriors against... Uh, well, Marines. No matter how many melee units you have, man with gun. Still pretty strong, especially in those choke points. Things gonna be cleaned up. How many command centers? Beyond? Now with nine command centers, building several more. I think actually he has like 12. Disruptor shots. Hero trying to press his way in. Gets a decent hit. Clips a ghost or two. Now getting Storm. DT blank. Plus one shields. He's finished a plus one flyer. I think he's also freeing up supply for the carriers. And then he warps in 10 DTs. Hero, are you insane? What are you doing? Why are you warping in 10 DTs? Remember you built all these Stargates? His base is looking like a campaign mission over here. Both sides are looking like a campaign mission. There's like, there are five Nexi, there are ten command centers. We've now got, uh, did he forget about the fusion core? High sec auto tracking, building armor, but no fusion core upgrades for Beyond. Uh, quite an oversight there. A scan spots the DTs, and EMP reveals them yet again. And DT blink might be done, and he uses it to escape. There's advanced ballistics. Hero trying to come down the ramp, disruptor shot. Now, well, this side's on his target. Liberators, Venn diagram of freedom overlapping here. And good luck coming down that ramp. I think Tempest have to be the choice now. Vikings up broadside again. Clips the edges. The Vikings don't care at this stage. Uh, they probably should, though. Losing five or six Vikings for one Colossus is probably a bit much. Both sides have to respect the DTs. 
Oh my, he spots them. Here they come. Slice through the bunker. The rest of the army kind of comes back, though. I don't... Like, EMP... He has enough scan. Uh, coming down this ramp ain't gonna happen. The DT's getting cleaned up. He sees him in the main. Yep, those are DTs. He comes down the ramp anyways. The Liberators absolutely obliterate this entire army. Wow, hero. Oh. You might have had the high ground, but he had the Liberators. And Hero warps in 12 Zealots and builds two more Rupters. Did he forget about his Stargates? He canceled the Rupters in favor of Colossi. But Hero has money in the bank. But he just lost so much. He's lost almost double the minerals and double the gas. Caduceus Reactor is on the way. But Beyond is going to have plus three liberators the time for carriers was before you threw away your entire incredibly expensive highly advanced protoss army hero and now you're gonna refill it with zealots and carriers i guess that's one way to spend your minerals three colossi three carriers the ultimate wings of liberty death ball but this is the wings of liberation and your legacy may just be the void at this stage as hero just you can't throw away an army of that complexity you're never going to be able to rebuild it and it's not like he traded he just lost it oh hero why do you do this to me 10 orbital commands beyond is at 63 scvs but his income is still perfectly fine as he has as i mentioned 10 orbital commands <sighs> EMPs. The Liberators are marching forward. Does Hero have a, there's a storm? Shield battery overcharged. EMP actually misses the mark. He's gonna get another storm. Storm a great historical and literal counter to Vikings here. More Templar with EMP, but the Liberators are covering so much. Hmm. Here come the carriers, but beyond. He doesn't need much encouragement to build more Vikings. Hero. Hero. Every day that ends in Y is a tough day to be a hero fan. Makes for such dramatic games. He's still maxed out. Beyond doesn't have a lot of money in the bank. Hero very well could take this. But Storm is good. He's just going to wade through it, though. Against the storm, Beyond literally doesn't care. He, he has the medevacs. His liberators and Vikings will weather it. The Templar are not enough. He needs the Rupters. The only thing the bio can't heal through. But there are no Rupters on the field. He agrees. Two Rupters on the way. The Colossi are a little better. But any anything that doesn't outright kill the Marauders, the Marines, and the Ghosts is almost not worth it. Hero with plus two, plus one about he's in beyond go with a turret push. Uh, Eleven orbit commands the TPM the turrets per minute. No, this isn't Bronze League heroes. But occasionally these two fool me. The Liberators will, will cover the, the Valley of Death here. Oh, but the Speed Zone allows the Stalkers to just roll on up and take out one of them. Two more Starports on the way. Here come the Rupters. Looking for the shots, the Liberators. And it looks like Hero just going deep in the pain here, but the Rupters are dead before the fight even starts. The carriers out on the front lines, but the Vikings are battling through. The Interceptor count is thinning. The Colossus are knocked to the ground. The Bio Army holds, and the turrets in support. The Building Armor turrets, the Interceptor count dwindles. Hero has made a mistake here. And Beyond has capitalized on it with two capital. Jeez. I don't think Hero recovers from this. Even if the Ruptors pop out and get massive hits, there's just nothing left here. Overcharge. Plus two plating. More charge lots. 
Beyond on maybe force back one carrier disruptor flank it's a decent hit eh hero has still way more income this game going kind of sideways no shield battery he's gonna kill that last carrier the bio army the liberators need to reposition disruptor EMP, more EMP, his disruptor from downtown doesn't target, he has to shoot a disruptor shot away from his zealots. No, the momentum's there. Beyond, oh, he's running. He, he barely has any minerals. Hero has so many minerals, he feels like he can't just type GG. But, like, he, the gas income. Actually, it's so much gas income as well, he's just losing so many units. 31,000, 32,000 minerals to 17k he has most of his side of the map of income but beyond bio is just rolling through it's beyond stoppable at this point mostly ghosts left over the tempests are chipping through but he's gonna need to take a sledgehammer a scalpel will not do zealots Again, attempting a counterattack. The probes are starting to die as Beyond rampages through. The game is still going. Oh my. Beyond just gonna keep wandering around while the Tempests are a mild to moderate annoyance. Might get a ghost, almost. More zealots up here. EMPs. More Tempests. Does he have cloak? I think that's cloak for banshees. Kind of lazy to have the same icon for both, don't you think? Beyond! After 23 minutes, 150 dead zealots. Hero! What have you done? The army supply, the army size difference visible there. And he was never able to rebuild that sort of level of army. Ah, hero. Now, Beyond played perfectly fine. He restrained his aggressive instincts and let Hero make a mistake. And Hero... Well... When he does something, he does it big. Even if it is losing your entire army to Liberator Bio. But, wow. A bit of a disaster piece there. A bit of a Gold League-style match. How appropriate, how ham-fisted of a segue into El Dorado. A map directly inspired by Golden Wall. One of the most divisive and dramatic maps in StarCraft II history. And so far, zero healing shrines. Still no healing shrines. So here we... <laughs> you filthy, filthy Terran. You disgusting. You... Uh, you can't keep getting away with it. You just... Hero is scouting for Proxy Rex, but the Proxy Rex is already inside the natural. Oh, no. I, he's looking everywhere. Oh, he's gonna, it's too late. Wait. Oh, come on. Oh my God. He's checking now. Surprise, motherfucker. It's, uh, it's... He checked last. He was hiding right inside the closet under the stairs. And yet, the barracks is done. I like how diligently he scoured the map. He didn't probe scout. He just, with a great, um... He was convinced. That probe went everywhere. Including where the barracks actually was. Unfortunately, he got there last. Beyond, wow, he picks up some gold minerals. But why, though? He just queued up, and he brings them home. Hmm. Brought some fancy minerals home for the boys. Wow. That SCV brought a souvenir home from the Proxy Rex. That's how Beyond do. Well, will he actually manage to get a probe here? Yep, gets one. Are we done? Uh, Stalker's about to finish. Second Reaper on the way. Ah. <sighs> 
What did this do? Hero, I can feel the salt. If I scout that, like, it would have been better not to scout it at all. Because there's nothing to be done about it. I guess you might have enough to save for a chrono or something. Beyond still going to kill probes. Ah. Dodges the zealot. Why don't we have a ranged attack? Shh, it's not in the budget. Why, because you spent all your money on DTs when you already built a fleet beacon? Shh, shut your non-existent mouth. <clears throat> Sorry, I um, saw a vision of Tassadar who spoke to me from the void and decided that the entire storyline of the StarCraft II um, existence needed to change. <clears throat> Sorry, I saw a vision of Tassadar seeing a vision of... Widow Mines. Mm, shut it down. Widow Mines. Just... That's enough. That's enough, Beyond. Alright. We've seen enough here. A four Widow Mine drop. Hmm. The Observer will see it. In fact, it'll pass right through it. The, the Medivac... Oh, he saw the Observer pass through it. So the Medivac comes in. Drops out one, two, three. And that's four... Well, three out of four. Target fire on the back line. Gonna be able to pick up. But does he have the boost? Ah! Eh. Disgusting. Gets out with two out of four. No, that medevac. Ah, uh, the Reapers! No! Ah, uh, Beyond finds an opportunity. As they say, Beyond finds a way. Don't do it. Don't do it, Beyond. Okay, sees the. They both saw it. Observer. Surprising, I didn't even get hit by that barracks, but the Marines will take it out. We saw it inside the wrecks. Well, Euro, and I mean, it's not terrible. It's not like this has gone horribly wrong or he's taken a lot of damage. It just feels like an emotional defeat, at least in the early game so far. Where Beyun gets away with the proxy Rex. He gets in with the Widow Mine drop. Again, apparently. He gets a mine out. This better die. Still gets a probe off it, but Beyun's so greedy. He could have just come home with the Medivac. He could have like burrowed the Widow Mine at the third or something or in the back. No, he comes in with the Medivac. Goes for the big plays. Of course, that's how Beyun always do. Is it Hero about to do a sentry charge lot all in? Like a force field the ramp sort of business here? What are you looking for? Otherwise... Well, here comes two medevacs this time. Did be on notice. The observer spawning him. There's storm on the way for Hero. Rushing it this time. Storm this early is definitely an existential threat to the Terrans. But a bunch of dudes with drugs and guns are an existential threat to everyone around them, including themselves with the stim pack. And the Metavax. Well, that one stalker, he gets one and gets saved with the prism. I love the detail. And beyond, another medevac down for very minimal damage. It's starting to add up. He's lost four mines. He's lost two medevacs, two reapers, a marauder, and five marines with that drop. Uh, the scan spots the Templar archives. Being chrono boosted, so that's quite a tell right there. There is a bunker. There are siege tanks. Hero's going for the bus, though. Now, well, that's a guardian shield as well. Plus one is done. And the drop of storms! 
washes over pretty much everything. The siege tanks will survive the initial wave. A couple gonna be taken out by the charge lots. But the warp prism brings in another round. And there's an Archon and an Immortal. And now the Marines from the Medivac dropping into the fray. But beyond, it looks like he's lost a critical mass, the Archon. And Hero takes it. Slaps back as Beyond tries all these fancy drips and drops over there. But he ran out of gas by the time Hero came in and laid down the storm hammer. Oh, I bet that was satisfying. After that early game? Mmm. Ah. <sighs> satisfying. Well. And finally, we get the healing shrines. We go to Atlantis. I believe there's been at least one or two maps in S2 history called some version of Atlantis, but this is just straight up Atlantis. With the healing shrines in the center. I'm reasonably sure those are healing shrines inside a bubula. So doubling up on it. Will they be relevant? I don't know. As the players seem to shy away from anything too new. But Hero... Heroes up two to one, just because of the disastrous Sacred Isle game. Doesn't mean Beyond gets extra points. Okay. Hero laying it down. Keeping the aggression on Beyond. And so far, that's paid off. As uh, Beyond has a tendency. And might I point out, the only game Beyond won was the one where he kept himself from constantly sending out random drops in meta. He really feels like uh, he, he needs to keep himself on a bit of a leash as you can't just be losing multiple medevacs for no damage. Uh, you can't keep getting away with it, at least unless they throw away their entire army attacking to an entrenched position, in which case you can probably get away with it. But that happens later. Probe is in. Going to see that all the buildings are inside the base. That's important to note. This, base has, uh, this map has some mixed bases with gold and blue minerals. It also has a back door location that you can potentially mine through. It's mostly supposed to be defensive, but there's a rocks and a mineral wall, which is quite a combination. Reaper. Pokes and prods. Second command center. And it's going to be a star... Wait, did Bion? Bion didn't get close enough to spot the stargate. So an important timing here. As with the widow mine on the way, the positioning of the widow mine. Slap them down a pylon where you'd want to build a tech lab. Also can spot what comes out of the factory. I I'm sure he'll cancel it, but I believe he saw the widow mine pop out with that pylon. Cheeky move there. He thought about keeping it. Twilight on the way. Oracle in production. That widow mine. Hmm. So far, none burrowed. Gonna burn through the Reaper. Actually lights up the Oracle for it. Will he just burrow them? Nope, he's gonna drop out. Building a Cyclone to help deflect the Oracle. The threat of the Widow Mines might be enough to keep the Oracle at bay. Unless Hero trusts his reaction time enough. Pokes. Takes a look around. Widow Mine drop coming in. The Adepts. Pre-shady. Kind of a crazy move there. But he got the timing right. And beyond. Well. He let the Adept shade. And now. He's trying to get him to light up the Oracle. And he succeeds. The Oracle still has enough energy for revelation. Important here. Good reaction. 
Beyond Prairie Dog in it. Mm, and it looks like another medevac may very well die. <laughs> oh, God. Without accomplishing pretty much anything, Beyond has killed one probe. He's down seven workers. As is customary when, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, Protoss is able to just keep building. Though Hero bit supply block there. So now Beyond, with his early aggression thwarted, commences the add-on reshuffle. As the tech labs get slapped onto the barracks. Or does the barracks get slapped on the tech lab? I'd say that. That's more accurate. They both agreed to have a mutual relationship. But uh, specifically, Stimpak Combat Shield. Blink is on the way. Charge. Plus one armor. Hero once again building up to that mid game army that can fight beyond outright. As opposed to sitting back and going for heavy tech. He's anticipating correctly that Beyond is going to go for a two-base timing push here. He doesn't have a third command center. I believe Hero has seen most of the base. So, Beyond needs to get something done. As without a third command center, you're kind of reliant on your army, keeping them busy and eventually grinding its way through. And downside here, Beyond a bit supply blocked... And drops a supply depot. He's building another one. Proxy gate spotted here. So probably a good thing. And he saw that early. Hero took the base on the high ground. Not the base with the rich mineral patches. Beyond picks up another medevac. Ah. He split off one of the medevacs here. Third command center starts, but he runs a severe risk of once again losing a important potential part of his army. A scan spots the stasis. We sacrifice one marine. Bit late. Ah, uh, is it? Just in time. Might be able to target down a sentry or two. Charge lots. Streaming in. The hero went all the way around like a zergling run by here. Even better, though. These have way more HP. We don't mind Burrows. Looking for a decent target. Hits the, the medevacs as well, but splashes over many of the zealots. Loses a siege tank. Doesn't actually raise the depots in time, as uh, beyond focusing. Loses a medevac? He's, nope, it's in vision. He's got perfectly good vision of that zealot sitting there. I stand very still. He can't see me. He's a predator. His vision is focused on movement. I don't, I don't think that's how it, how it works. Another huge group of zealots is coming in. And Hero. Well. And uh, we don't mind slam the point home. It's going, it's effectively all in now. Poor Beyond, he's going to lose so many SCVs. He needs to get the damage done. But he has an army that definitely can do so. Oh, the force fields are actually great here. He tries to pick up and save him a little bit slow on it, but for the most part, he gets away. The stalkers are coming back to defend. Even a charge lot's still there. The force field's now working out for beyond. Charge lot's on the other side. Killed 22 SCVs. These force fields don't do much but annoy the bio army. And beyond starting to turn it around. The bio at half HP, but what's left to deal with it? The medevacs are starting to run low on energy. 17 probes dead. Another group of charge lots coming through. Save the immortal Prism Micro. Amazing right now. Hero holding on. 17 probes down. And Blank Stalkers may get another medevac. But I think Beyond did the damage he needed to do. He got his third command center done. He killed a bunch of probes. I guess he didn't kill a Nexus. And now Hero does have plus one, plus one. He has those more cost-effective zealots. Neither player really even 
glancing at the healing shrine. Unfortunately, loses another medevac, but he still has the army supply. He's tearing through the rocks. Another zealot counter hero willing to risk it all. Sending out this many zealots could very well leave him in the exact same scenario as before, where he just didn't have enough to deal with Beyond's army. He sends out a smaller group, but still a decisive amount, where he can't fight. All right, he's going to lose the fight against the bio. Well, the Whittle Mines, and there's not that many Marines left over. Juggling into the shield battery, I may have to eat my words as the Whittle Mine shots and the Zealots coming back around with the flank at the last moment, and Beyond is forced back yet again. He keeps the aggression on, and Hero allows him to attack into that entrenched position. More bio coming up. He's going to drop the mules. The upgrades are starting to kick in. Hero has eight gateways. More Zealots being warped in. Hero unwilling to drag this out. I'm sure he'll keep the aggression on as long as Beyond does nothing on the other side of the map. And here come the Zealots. SCVs have to be pulled. He has to do something. The Immortals juggling back, trying to retarget on to the Marauders. And snipes off the Medivacs. No energy. They're wandering forward, and Hero has tilted the scales. And he takes the victory. Hero will be the Team Liquid Map Contest Champion with a relatively decisive score of 3 to 1. What a roller coaster of a series. A great experience. The maps are cool. I look forward to playing on it. Hopefully at least some of them whenever Bobby gets a, 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 his quarterly lunch break in order to change out the maps at some random day sometime in the future. But what was your favorite? Uh, and if there are any more highlight matches from the map contest you want to see, make sure to let me know. But thank you for watching. I hope I made your day just a, a little bit better. If you got the means and motivation, be awesome if you could check out patreon um but i hear liking and subscribing is still free for now checking out the second channel for more gameplay streams stormgate zero space other keywords and uh otherwise uh, recommended autoplay you know thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed i'll see you next time good luck have fun stay chill